All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be covering spray foam when I did my building. Um, this is a super hot topic and it's a very controversial topic, if you will. Um, if you're here from my normal channel, you guys seen it, you know, where I, I introduced that I was doing my shop and I mentioned in the spray foam and a lot of you guys showed interest about how that process worked. If you're here from looking at the thumbnail, Trust me, I've been exactly where you're at. You've done research. You went to this website, it says do it this way. You go to another website, it says do not do it that exact same way. So there's a lot of conflict and in information. So hopefully in this video, I can provide all those answers for you to help your decision a little bit easier if you're looking at spray foam versus conventional foam, whether it's be open sale, closed sale spray foam, we're gonna cover it all in this video and hopefully it helps you out because trust me, I've been there. It is a nightmare to get all this figured out. So let's do it. All right guys, so like I mentioned in the intro, today we're gonna to be talking about spray foam. Um, a couple of months ago when we started this project, I started doing a lot of research about what kind of insulation should I use in the top of my building, what kind of insulation would be best. And I can tell you, when you start trying to look at research on spray foam, the answers are all over the place. There's no cut and dry, do it this way, it should be done this way, it's recommended to do it this way. No, it's all a bunch of crazy, garbage it will take you down a weird rabbit hole that you will never find your way back out of and you may be there right now watching this video so hopefully i can explain it to you um months ago when we started this project uh fortunately for me i was able to find a spray foam contractor that has been doing this for a long time this business is actually a family business and he started it back when spray foam was kind of just like a new uh, kind of experimental type insulation foam for high-end commercial projects. So he's been around the sp spray foam industry a very, very long time. When I first started talking with him, started asking him some questions, his first response was me to me was stay off those barn dominium websites. So apparently he's heard all the mumbo jumbo that I've read about and all this, and he said it all straight. Um, there's a lot a lot of information that you can consume on spray foam and hopefully I'll be able to cover the pros and cons today. And one of the big problems that I had a hard time doing is, is when we built it, should I use a moisture barrier or should I not use a moisture barrier? And I talked to him, I talked to you know several people that had done buildings like this and you know kind of bounced ideas back and forth. And after talking with my spray foam guy, it depends on the moisture barrier that you choose. When we built this building, we used this type of moisture barrier. As you see, it has a silver solar reflective coating on this side and a white plastic coating on this side. It's a woven type material that is ripstop, so it's extremely strong. Now there are several types of this moisture barrier, so you need to make sure that you talk with your building contractor or if you're building it yourself to get the correct moisture barrier to start with because that's very important when it comes time to put your spray foam insulation up. But this is like a bubble wrap type foil coated ripstop plastic pretty much is what it is. It's kind of like a, an air pockets between you. This here is safe to use um, under your spray foam. Now this was installed, it's about six foot wide sheets. It goes from one side on the very bottom next to where your concrete would be all the way up over the top, across the other top and down the side. No splits, no seams, all one solid sheet. It's overlapped three to four inches and it continues all the way down to the building. The ends are also wrapped the same way. Now, like I say, that is acceptable. That's perfectly safe. And it's actually a very large pro by going with this. So when I talk to my spray foam guy, it's actually a great product to have on there before your spray foam for two reasons. One, believe it or not, this still protects heat from the summer 
from getting your insulation hot. And two, if you ever have a damaged panel, whether it be a limb fall on it or hail damage or whatever acts of God may come into your life, if you don't have a moisture barrier, when you go to replace that panel, you have to cut the insulation, remove the panel, and then you have to put a new panel back on and have it refoamed. If you have a moisture barrier, since this is affixed to all your joists before your metal is installed, you can simply remove the screws, remove the piece of metal, put a new piece of metal back on, no damage is done to the inside insulation of your, your building, you're good to go. So that is the pros of having it done. Now I mentioned there was another type of moisture barrier that is not acceptable to be spray foamed. There's multiple kinds of this. There's the non-ripstop version. that's sort of a rubber texture that will stretch. That will be a problem for you. Don't use that if you intend to spray foam above it. There's also another one that is a fiberglass back and that is not recommended to use spray foam either. Um, my spray foam contractor said they've done hundreds of these buildings with this type of insulation slash moisture barrier um because when you go to look this up and purchase it that is what it's called is that insulation moisture barrier it's got some small pretty much insignificant r value to it but that's safe to use no problems at all spray away um just be careful and pay attention to what you purchase or if you're having it done by a contractor and you know you're gonna use spray foam, make sure you discuss the moisture barrier talk with your contractor before they put it up. Um, and, and you should be fine. I did touch on the R value of this. That's another thing I wanna talk about. I've read a lot about the R values um, of spray foam between closed cell and open cell. Obviously closed cell has a higher R value per inch than open cell does um, and if you read on a lot of sites they say to spray an inch of an inch to inch and a half of closed cell foam and you'll be good to go no problems that is a hundred percent not true um, I talked with the contractor on this as well after doing a lot of research and you need to look at what is recommended or value for the area you live in um, I live in North Mississippi and it's recommended to have a R40 to 50 in the roof R19 on the wall. You may live where it's a lot more extreme cold or a lot more extreme heat and your R values will differ greatly. So don't just go by inch and a half to two inches or inch to inch and a half. Don't listen to that. Go by the R value. You can talk with your spray foam contractor to find out which R value um, you're looking at per inch. In this building, we did um, five to five and a half inches of spray foam throughout the building and that's going to you know be about an r45 and i did open cell foam um there's a lot of misconceptions about that as well and hopefully i can cover that because that was a, a, a lengthy discussion that i had with my guy if you're going to be touching it so let's say you spray your building you want to leave your walls exposed and not put a covering over it you definitely need to use closed cell foam that foam's more like the great stuff foam that's in a can. It's kind of a hard texture on it. It's a, a thicker skin type that goes over it, a lot more rigid. Um, it's safe to have that exposed to, to the outside because if you, you know, lean something up against the wall, it's not going to damage it. If you press against it, it's not going to collapse in, all that good stuff. It's a lot more rigid. Um, so it's going to take a lot more abuse to being exposed and being bumped and hit. Open cell foam is a lot softer. You can still mash it in. Um, it does have a skin to it. So if you touch it, it's gonna be a little firm, um, but it's kind of like the foam that you would have inside your couch cushions. And it's a, uh, a lot more airish foam, I guess is the, the correct way to put it. It's not as dense and hard. Um, so therefore it does take a deeper amount to have the same R value of open cell as it does of closed sale. Um, there is a huge difference in price between open sale foam and closed sale foam in the pricing. So keep that in mind when you're doing everything on your build. I elected to save the money to 
since I knew I was gonna cover the walls anyway, and I'll, I'll show you everything in here, how we did it. Um, my exterior walls have a six by six post and it has a two by six on the outside wall. Um, I elected to build stud walls in between the, the six by sixes. And you know, that way I'd have a place to hang conventional insulation as well as hide all my electrical wires, hang my boxes, put my plug-ins, switches, all that good stuff. And I wanted a finished wall. Um, you know, it's all depend on what you want as far as your shop or barn dominium or whatever you're building that, that may fall into this category. But we elected to go with the standard batting foam. Um, this is John Mansfield R19, it's six inches deep. That's what we put inside the stud walls. And then we covered it with a material called Smart Siding. It's a four by eight sheets, half inch thick. Um, it's a composite type wood siding material. And I'll show you, uh, you know, videos of all that, how we did that. So as you can see, we pretty much just framed up between each one of these posts here, eight foot tall. I did a floor plate, I did a top plate, and I put my um, joists or rafter studs, whatever you want to call it, going up and down. And then I insulated it with this type of insulation in between there, and then we coated it. All of this was done before the spray foam, and I'll explain to you why I did that. All right, one of the reasons why I wanted to have the the wall in and finish before my spray foam guy come, that way that could be sealed because obviously you're putting a two by four uh, top plate and floor plate in on a wall that is six inches deep or five and a half deep because it is a, you know, a six by six. So I wanted everything sealed to the elements no matter what. So I wanted to make sure all that was completely sealed in once my spray foam guy left. I elected to go ahead and put in my, um, I did a mini split heat pump AC unit. I elected to go ahead and have that run in. I framed that up, the studs for it, and also framed up another one for in case I need to add another one after the Mississippi super heat wave comes that we have every year. I would already be prepared for that. But I went ahead and run that, that way he could foam around that on the inside as well. All of those refrigerant lines are foamed in the framing as it was installed. I did put ceiling fans in. It's all foamed under the braces for it. Everything was completely done. Even the lights were hung before the spray foam come. Now there are pros and cons with that. You will spend a little bit more money because it does take quite a bit more prep time but I feel like it's worth it because now all of my wiring, my conduit, everything is encapsulated inside that foam. So it's there. I don't have to worry about it. Um, there's no air leaks around any exterior, uh, like where the uh, meter head goes in. You know, I've got some cameras installed. Um, you know, I've got, uh, light outside all of that has been spray foamed over so it's a hundred percent sealed off to the outside elements or drafts or whatever that could come in from the outside that is completely taken care of now you know just kind of do your research and make sure if you decide to do it this way you go ahead and plan ahead like i knew i was going to put a ring camera on the back over here I knew it was gonna put lights on this side. I knew it was gonna put a plug-in over here. I knew it was gonna have disconnect boxes on this side for air compressor, both of the mini splits. And then I did an auxiliary generator plug that I installed on here. I made sure I had all of that stuff completely done before I ever started the spray foam process. Um, I'll show you some videos of the spray foam uh, as far as the prep, how it looks when they do it. Um, just be prepared. Obviously when they come, you'll need to have it completely cleaned out so they can, you know, access everything. Like in mine, it's about 19 feet to the ceiling in the center. Um, you know, they're gonna use scaffolding or some kind of a sky lift. So just keep that in mind, make sure everything's completely out of the building. Everything will be covered completely in plastic. There'll be nothing exposed because even the, the little bit of mist that comes out of that is, is like a paint 
So it's going to move wherever the drafts are. So like if they've got the, if you've got a roll up door and they've got the door raised up about four inches for their lines to come in, it's going to suck that there. So everything will be covered in plastic. Um, we wrap my beams, we wrap my lights, the floor, the walls, everything you know, was completely done and it was all taped off with duct tape uh, to protect it from that overspray and stuff. And, you know, I decided to leave my foam exposed. So if you look at the foam, you'll see kind of the spray marks and this and that, and that's fine because my intentions are later on down the road, I do want to paint this like a flat black on everything that is, is spray foam, um, but that's gonna be down the road. It's been so much money up to this point to get here. So a lot of you may be asking, why did I go with the batting foam in the walls versus having the wall sprayed? Well, that's pretty simple because it came down to money. It was $3,000 extra to do the spray foam in the walls versus me do the insulation because I wanted it all sealed off. I elected to do the regular insulation myself because I did that for about, I think it was around $1,800 to $2,000. Now that's me doing all the labor myself um, to put that insulation in. And if you've never put insulation in, it's super easy. Like you just staple it up. It's not hard at all to do. You know, it saved me about $3,000 in the long run over the cost of the building. So I just had them spray from above the eight foot wall up to the 12 foot sidewalls that's in my building and then across the ceiling to finish it out. Um, if I had the whole thing done, it was gonna be around, I think it was like $11,700. So, you know, that's a, that's a huge savings when you can take off $3,000 cause that's money I can use on other things such as concrete on the front or whatever that you may need to do when you're building your building. Cause as you go through these steps, you will realize whatever you thought it was going to cost add about 20 percent on it because it's going to be a lot more of the time it's done but anyway um it's a pretty cool process how the foam works um it looks like a paint gun that they use they spray it on and it just instantly swells up and you know expands to seal all the cracks and crevices it's a really cool process to see um, once they get everything completely done, they went back and started taking all the plastic off of everything. And the last thing was they rolled it all up into a huge ball in the floor. So I had two massive balls of plastic that was probably five foot wide, six foot long, four foot wide to get rid of. But um, you will see a lot of little bitty tiny uh, foam specks around on everything. And I just took a leaf blower and it was just stuck on the, the painted walls from the static electricity. Took a leaf blower and knocked it right out. Um, but other than that, I'm extremely happy with it. We had a really cold spell where it got down in the twenties and I had my little uh, mini split on and it didn't run very long at all. And it got it up to temperature in here at 70. Um, it's done an excellent job of keeping the building where I wanted it to be at 70 degrees throughout all the weather that we've had recently. So time will tell in the summer whether one mini split will work or I'm going to have to have two because we do have some brutal hot summers, but we'll always know once that gets here about July and August. But hopefully this will answer some of your questions about moisture barrier Hopefully I answered your questions on open sale versus closed sale, the depth of it. Just look online, look at what your recommended R value is for the region that you live in, because that greatly varies too, depending on if you got extremely hot or extremely cold. It's simple Google search will put you right on it. Um, and just talk to your spray foam contractor to ask him what the R value per inch is between closed sale and open sale. Open sale, was a whole lot cheaper for me to do five and a half, you know, in some inches, you know, some spots it's over six inches, you know, because it's past the two to six, but um, it was a lot cheaper for me to go with open sale. And since I wasn't going to be touching it, rubbing it, bumping it, all that good stuff, it just made sense to put that in the top and save the money on it. Um, another advantage of closed cell foam, if you've got an older building that's got a lot of drafts and maybe it's not perfectly structurally sound, 
It provides a lot of rigidity to your building. It will definitely firm up an older structure a lot better than the open cell is. So that's another thing to consider if you're going to use spray foam in an older structure. But anyway, guys, that's the video today. Hopefully you learned a little something about spray foam and I answered some questions because it is a very hard topic to get down to the bottom of. And I'm super blessed to have a contractor. Um, the owner's son actually did this, this here. Um, he's a young guy. <clears throat> he was pretty cool letting me video in here. Um, the dad's a lot more old school guy. He was, you know, he's in his like late sixties. I don't even know if he knows what YouTube is, but anyway, um, he answered all the questions I need. And I did talk to the son and confirmed a lot of the stuff to make sure that I was right. And I just wanted to put that out there where maybe it will help some of you guys. That's my video guys. If you like it, hit that thumbs up. Definitely appreciated. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button because you'll never know what you're going to see on this channel. You guys have a great one. We'll catch you next time.